In today's video, I'm going to be troubleshooting a very common problem, and that's when you go to turn on just the vent on your vehicle. It may be nice and cool outside, so you put this on because you don't want your AC, but you want the fresh air, and you notice that the air coming out of the vents is much warmer than the outside air. You may also notice that when the air conditioning system is on, the air coming out of the vents is not as cold as it used to be, and you're pretty sure it's not because of a low refrigerant charge, because when you go outside and you look under the hood, and you find the low pressure suction line, which is the larger tube heading into the evaporator on your firewall, when you touch it, you can feel that it's extremely cold and it's covered in condensation. So that's a very good indication that your AC system is at or near a full charge. And the only time there would really be an issue is if you had a faulty expansion valve or maybe it is an orifice tube that's partially clogged. But in my experience, way back in the 90s up until now, most of the time the problem is not the result of the expansion valve or the orifice tube, but a problem with the blend door. Now the blend door, if you put this to hot, there is a door right behind the center console that opens and closes and it regulates how much hot air from the heater core, which is basically a small radiator, inside this plastic housing, which is very large, behind the center console, going behind the glove box. You have the cold section, which is the evaporator. And on the left side, in my case, I have the heater core, which gives off the heat. And the system temperature is regulated, uses cold air from the evaporator and hot air from the heater core to adjust the temperature in the cabin. Sometimes the door that opens and closes for the heater core, it does not close fully. Sometimes it may be open partially, even when the switch is set to cold. And as a result, when the AC is off, when you put the fan on, you're going to notice that the air is very warm coming out of the vents. And that's because that door is not tightly sealed. If the AC is on, you're going to notice that the air is not as cold. The information contained in this video can also be used to troubleshoot the problem of no heat in your vehicle. Now besides the blend door, some vehicles have underneath the hood where you see the two hoses going into the firewall for the heater core. They have a valve, it's called a heat control valve, and it regulates how much hot coolant is going into the heater core behind the dash. If that valve is faulty and you happen to have one, when this is set to cold, the coolant should be at a minimum going through that heater core or shut off completely. When it's on hot, the valve opens up the flow of coolant, letting it go through that little radiator, the heater core, giving you all the heat. So there's really only two problems, and the most common one is the blend door, but you can also have the problem with the heater control valve. So what I need to do is take a look inside this housing. To do that, I'm going to be using an inspection camera right over here. You don't have to use a higher priced one. This one has an SD card in it, does video, still shots, everything. You can buy a simple one for your cell phone that connects up, but it's very important that yours has a very bright LED light with the camera. And you wanna make sure it's very small like this one. Now, because the inside of that plastic housing is black, even with this light, it's still going to be pretty hard to see what's going on. Because I want you to see this very clearly on video, what I'm going to do is insert this light, push it all the way into the vent and down, and I'm going to turn it on and it's going to give me a lot of extra light so you can see exactly what's going on behind the center console inside the plastic housing. To get started, I'm going to push this all the way to hot. I'm going to put the key in the engine to the on position right before we do the test. That's going to move the door to make sure it's fully open next to the heater core. Shove this all the way in. And it's gonna drop down into that hole all the way in the back. I'm going to supply 4.2 volts from a lithium 18650 battery. Now when this is inserted into the vent, into the housing, I'm also going to take a look at the condition of the evaporator since this vehicle is 18 years old. Okay, let's turn on the engine here, put it to the on position. Okay. 
and this is on number two. I'm going to leave it on number two. And right now, the door is open. So let me insert this, and you'll see everything as we go in. The first thing we see is one door at the top. And you can see right here when I change the settings, how that door opens and closes. Now let's go a little further down. And we're going to go more towards the right. So I'm going to rotate the camera or twist it to curve it more towards the right. And that's where the evaporator is. And you can see that right over here on the right side. Let me get much closer just to take a look at the condition of the, the metal. It's aluminum. I want to take a look at the fins, see if there's any corrosion towards the bottom where it sits in water. And it looks pretty damn good for 18 years old. Now we're going to go all the way to the left side. Here you can see the blend door is open. I'm going to close it quickly. It's hard to tell from this angle if it is fully closed. So I'm going to change the position of the camera. Right here you can see I'm turning on the heat, opening the door more. And now I'm going to rotate the knob counterclockwise to the cold position to close the door. And we can see it going back in with that piece of plastic but it looks like there's a little bit of a space where that door is not fully closing. And that can easily result in warmer air coming out of the vent. So I'm going to have to take a closer look at the actuator. Let's pull the camera out of the housing and now out of the vent. So what I think I'm going to do is take a look in my center console and underneath the dash to see if I could locate where the actuator is for that blend door. Now, older vehicles, they used vacuum-controlled actuators. The really tiny vacuum lines that were hard plastic, they developed cracks. And when they cracked, you couldn't pull a really deep vacuum on those actuators. And that's why when you gave it gas, all of a sudden things would start working. But with the newer vehicles, everything is electronically controlled. So let me see if I can find it. It's usually under the dash there or underneath by the driver's side. And most people, if the door isn't closing properly, are not going to want to start pulling their whole dash apart to find this. Sometimes it's very difficult to get to the actuator. So I'll show you what you can do in a minute after I locate mine. I found it, and it's right underneath here by the glove box, way back in the corner. And I found out what the issue is with this one. And it should be fairly simple for me to fix to get that door to close tight. I'm going to have to modify a few things, but you can see right over here where it's located. And if I put it in the hot position, you can see the way it moves as I head towards cold. And when it gets to the very end where cold is, you can see that it's not fully pushing that lever into position. So if I push on that with my finger, like you see right here, now the door is closed. Because the actuator in my vehicle is easy to get to, I'm just going to unbolt it and try and adjust the holes on the plate maybe to get it to rotate just a little more in one direction. So when this is in the cold position, it's going to push on that plate where it should to make sure the door is fully closed. If you can't find yours or you do not want to take your dash apart, then definitely check to make sure you do not have a heat control valve connected up to your heater core under the hood. If you do and the engine is cool, you can drain some coolant from the radiator so you can remove and test the valve. The electronic version that uses a solenoid, all you have to do is apply 12 volt power to the terminals to see if the valve opens and closes. If you have a valve that's triggered by vacuum, then you would need a vacuum hand pump in order to test the valve to make sure it functions properly. You might want to try swapping it out. They're not that expensive, usually 20 to 50 bucks. And it's a lot cheaper than bringing your car to a shop to have them test it for you. The last thing you can do and the least expensive thing you can do, if you do not care about having heat and you live in a hot climate like me, simply bypass the heater core. You could take the two hoses off that you see on the firewall, just loop the two together, put the clamps back. Now you're not going to have any more heat inside the housing with the evaporator. It's going to make your air condition as cold as possible because you no longer have that hot radiator heating up the walls of that plastic housing to increase your temperature. If you'd like, you can also cut one of the rubber hoses, install a ball valve, a brass ball valve, 
with barbed fittings on each side and you can turn it on in the winter to let the coolant go in when you want the heating and you can turn it off in the summer when you want to have maximum cooling for your vehicle. I hope this video helps you out. If it did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.